We are here, praise God, amen. Glory to God. Y'all y'all like my mic? It's 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 kinda like, you know, it's I was gonna paint it, but it was it's for Dr. Dr. Bill let us use his mic, man. And uh we we're so great grateful to Dr. Bill for letting us use his microphone. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be like like low profile where you know you don't really see it, you know. But it's like you know, it's like, but it's it, it coordinates with my jacket. Right. There you go. So, there you go. <laughs> so all things work together for good. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna do a little congregational song. If, if if you know it, sing along. If not, hum along and. Praise God, and then we'll jump right in this word. Amen. Amen. The, the 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 title of this is "I Love You," and I'm sure you you've heard it before. And if you haven't, praise God anyway. And it's 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 like this: I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise let's sing that song let's sing that one more time I love you I love you I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise that's why my heart is filled with praise that's why my heart is filled with praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you love the Lord tonight? Yeah. Amen. He's been good. He's been good. Amen. Glory to God. Well, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn them with me to the... Uh, Book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Uh, we're going to be starting at the 57th verse, and we'll go to the 58th verse. I believe we got a word from the Lord tonight. Yeah. We're not going to be covering any brand new ground, and we know we're not going to be teaching any new doctrine or anything like that. We're just going to kind of stay right in the same vein of faith that we we're all accustomed to. Glory to God. We may we may hit some things a little differently with a little different perspective, but glory to God, it's going to all be good. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it reads, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about staying on course. Yeah, you need to. We're going to stay on course. You know, we've got a lot of things in our society and things going on all around us that will get us off course as a Christian. Amen. Amen. But you know, we want to. We want to stay in the middle of the road. You know, you got you got a ditch over here, and you got a ditch over here. The devil's more than willing to push you over any, either one of them. But we want to stay on course, and we're going to share some things with you tonight to help 
uh, keep us on course. Amen. Amen. Um, the God's Word translation uh, of 1557 through 58 says, Thank God that he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, do not let anyone move you off the foundation of your faith. Always excel in the work you do for the Lord. You know that the hard work you do for the Lord is not pointless. Amen. And that's out of the God's Word translation. Isn't that good? Yeah. Amen. Tonight we're going to talk about staying on course. We're living in a time when, you know, who we are and what we are and what we believe is being challenged on every side. But instead of the church standing up and declaring with boldness, holding up the blood-stained banner of Christ, the church has adopted this watered-down, wimpy mantra of tolerance and acceptance. We need to get bold in our Christianity, amen? amen. Yeah. These, are, these are the last of the last days. We need, we need to, th th this is the time where we need to turn it on. Amen? amen. amen. We need to get bold about our Christianity. Let's, let's call sin what it is. Sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's, let's stop trying to give it some catchy for it, catchphrase name, you know, make it, make it cute, you know, so it can be politically correct and all that. Let, let's just call it what it is. It's sin. That's sin, brother. You're sinning right now. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Praise God. Let's, let's dare to go out on fire. Yeah. Let's dare to do that. Not lukewarm and watered down. Straddling the fence, straddling the fence of right and wrong, like the long red you're riding trigger. You know, we just <laughs> trying to trying to be politically correct. I don't want to offend anybody. You know, you're straddling the fence. You're lukewarm. And so tonight we're going to talk about how we can stay on course, how we can stay in the middle of the road, fulfill our destiny that God has for us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time right now, Father, that we can share your word and, and share the things that you have placed in my heart, Father. I pray right now that every person under the sound of my voice will get a fresh man of word from you. Father, I thank you right now that your word will go forth with boldness and power. I ask you to speak through my lips, process thoughts through my mind, and, and, and let your spirit touch every heart in this place. Let something take, let everyone in this building take something away from the word of God tonight that they can use and that will propel them to the next level in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen, amen. Well, the first thing we want you to, to know about staying on course is uh, found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We want you to know that you need to trust God. Amen. You need to trust God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Six verse says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You can't trust God with your mind. You can't trust God with your intellect. It's not possible. It's not possible mentally. You cannot attain to the things of God with your mind, with this gray matter, with your, your mental faculties. It's by the Spirit. You are going to have to learn how to trust God in your heart. When things come up, you won't be moved because it's in your heart. You're settled. Yeah. Yeah. You're not letting anything get you off. Amen? That assurance and confidence can only come by the Spirit. John 4 and 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost gets you dialed in. Now that's old golf, that's a golf phrase, getting dialed in, you know, when you're trying to get your swing right and, you know, get it to go, instead of going in the woods over there or in the lake over here, you know, or hit your neighbor that's standing over there on the other fairway. I've done all of that. <laughs> know how that can happen. You know, uh, me and Brother Jerry play golf from time to time, and uh, 
you know, you know sometimes we'll hit one and be way over there in another fairway somewhere and <laughs> and uh, you know Jerry would say you know I wonder I wonder if they know we way over here I said they will in a minute I said because we right there right now amen but praise God don't make major decisions without spending some time praying in the spirit amen. be willing to hold off until the peace of God shows up amen. Philippians 4 and 6 through 7. Let's turn over there. Four and six. If you got it, say amen. amen. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, when you're waiting on the peace of God, don't get in a hurry. Because, see, a lot of times we get it, we, we got this microwave generation going on. Everything's, everything's like, got to have it like yesterday. And see, the things of God are exactly the opposite. You gotta, you gotta be willing to wait on God. You gotta be willing to say, Lord, not my will, but your will. Not my way, your way. I want you to, in your time in God. And see, in many times when we're waiting on God, we're avoiding other stuff. Amen? You know, cause see, if we get out there in front of God, you know, we find ourselves like, whoa, well, we stepped in something here. And, you, and the Bible say, withdraw your foot from evil when you find yourself there. Amen? You know, but you shouldn't have been out there to begin with because you should have been willing to wait on God. Amen? And we've all been there. You know, you, you, get, you get a call or you get some communication in the mail and you're thinking, oh, man, I need to do something on this right now. And really, you should take some time and say, Lord, what would you have me do on this? And just be willing to wait. If it doesn't require that you give an immediate answer, say, I'm just going to wait on God. I'm just going to wait on God. That's how we're staying on course. Amen? We're staying on course. Staying on course. Don't make major decisions without spending some time praying in the Spirit. And be willing to hold off until the peace of God shows up. Try to stay away from making rush decisions. Emergencies shouldn't catch a, a believer totally off guard. We have the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he the Spirit of truth is come, he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Mm -hmm. So we got the Holy Ghost, amen? Yeah. And so when things... You know, when something catches you off guard, that ought to be a red flag for you. The first thing you ought, man, I hadn't been, you check your prayer time. Check that wait, waiting and seeking time out. I'm sure there was a cat on the line somewhere in that area where you could have been waiting on the Lord and he could have told you, this is, this is coming up and you, know, you need to do something about that. This is what you need to do. Amen? Amen? Be willing to wait on God. Amen? When there's only plan A, you know, when there's only plan A, you, you know you're in faith and you're trusting God. If you have a contingency plan in place for just in case, then you're not sure. You need to get back in God's face until you know that you know. Or until the peace shows up. We should have a daily fellowship time with God. And every morning I get up and, you know, I walk. And during that time, I take time to, to pray in the spirit and, and get, get adjusted, get set up for the day. You know, it, it allows God, uh, me and God get a chance to get, get tuned in with each other. You know, he's already, he's all, he doesn't change. So what does that mean? That means I'm getting in line with him. Mm -hmm. right. 
praise God. So I'm getting in line with him, and that's what every believer needs to be doing. And a lot of times when we, when we don't spend that time, we, we miss stuff. You know, stuff catches us off guard. You know, we, we find ourselves like, oh, man, I meant, to, I meant to take care of that. You know, but, but when you're in tune with the Spirit of God, when you're in tune with the Holy Ghost, you can say, don't forget about such and such. And don't forget you got to do such and such today. You know, you need to call so-and-so and encourage them. They're going through a hard time. You know, different things the Holy Spirit will tell you when you're spending that fellowship time. Amen? amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief makes you look at other options. You know, when, you, when you're not sure that you know that you know, you know, there's going to be... There's going to be doubt and unbelief that shows up. But it can't get you off God's plan when you're settled. When you, have, when you have it in your heart, this is the direction. This is what we're going to do. The world calls you insane if you continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. But if you're in line with the Word of God, the Bible calls it faith. Amen. Mm. And you know, I heard, I, well, the first time I heard that statement that if you do it over and over again, you could be in faith, it was right here at Faith and Victory with Pastor Ed. Mm -hmm. You know, because I had, I had bought into the mantra, if you're doing it over and over again and you're expecting a different result, then that's insanity. You know, but then, you know, you have to qualify that. Well, what does the Word have to say about that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you find over, over, over through the Word of God. People doing the same thing over and over and over again. And God says, faith. You're in faith. Walk around the walls of Jericho seven days. Uh -oh. Well, that's insane. <laughs> Was it? No. Because they walk right in. They were like, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and, they were, and you can just imagine, you know, the, all the jeering and the you know, finger pointing and sneering and laughing and all that going on, these guys on the wall. Man, look at these foolish people walking around the, the city. Don't they know that they are not coming in here? Wow, this is hilarious. Dude, you got a hole in your shoe. You know, somebody, hey, you fell down, pick your face up. You know, they're shouting all kinds of things off the wall. Well, it wasn't so funny when that wall uh, yeah. The earth opened up and the wall dropped down. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and they, the Israelites were like, now what were you saying? Uh, you, you were saying something. <laughs> uh, we weren't saying nothing. No, that was that was that was my brother. He <laughs> said that. He said that. No, you're talking another tune now. Uh-huh. Praise God. Sometimes as we look at the great patriarchs of faith, we have a tendency to look at individuals as, as superhuman. You know, you, you hear about the, you know, you read where the prophet outran the, the, the chariot, you know, you're like, man, I have a hard time catching up to my six-year-old. And he's run out running the chariot, you know. But, you know, we look at these, these individuals and we're thinking, you know, man, they, they couldn't be like me, you know. You know, it, like they didn't put their pants on like one leg at a time. You know, they just did it like, ha, ha, you know. No, they did. They, they, they were just like us. Amen. Amen. Right, right. Just like us. And we need to realize that these men and women that were used of God were the test pilots for the program of faith. If they could stand in the midst of their adversity, which in many cases was far more dire than what we would ever hope to face, we really don't have an excuse for not making it through our trials in life. That's good. Amen. You know, how many times have you been in the lion's den? Yeah, really. You know, like, hee, kitty, 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 kitty. You know, man, can you imagine the soiling on yourself that would take place <laughs> after being in that, just, just not, not even actually going in, the thought of going in. Yeah, we're going to put you in this lion's den and see how you do. Uh, what's that smell? <laughs> That's him. 
But anyway, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Now all these things happen unto them for an example. That means example, King James. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Well, let me wrap up this point by saying, trust God. Amen. Spend more time praying in the Spirit. The more time you spend praying in the Spirit, the more you'll trust God. Amen. The more you learn to trust God, the more time you'll spend in praying in the Spirit. They work hand in hand. Amen? Praise God. Now, we're going to talk about the next point here, and the, the ditch of unforgiveness and bitterness will keep you off course. Because if you get caught up with unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart, you won't be able to flow, and you won't be able to, to, to do the things that the Lord will have for you to do. You won't be able to exercise your faith like you, like you should because you're, you're caught up in this, in this thing that's rotten in, in, your, in your spirit. Amen? Many times when we've been done wrong, we want God to pour out his wrath and vengeance on our behalf without real, realizing that at some point in our, in our past, we were deserving of God's wrath ourselves. But instead, we got grace. Oh, thank God. We got mercy. Amen. We got favor. Yep. Praise God. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Now, you know, speaking for myself, you know, this, this past weekend, um, my car was broken into, and um, the, the thieves decided that they wanted my, my, my radio and uh, some other things. They, want, they took my crock pot. Like at the hideout, they're going to be cooking some beef stew later. <laughs> and they didn't take the lid on the crock pot. Yeah, really, that does a lot of good. <laughs> I'm thinking, really, if you just give me where you're at, I'll bring you the lid too, yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, really, you know, you're going you're gonna to take my crock pot, which I was really going to be attached to, you know, I hadn't even used it yet. I just bought it, you know, bought it at the Salvation Army. You know, I'm like, man, this is a great deal on a crock pot. I'm on, man. You know, and they come and got it. I'm thinking, oh, okay, all right then. Okay. And so they, they took my laptop and some other stuff, and I'm thinking, okay. Lord, I need you to burn their eyes out right now. You know, but that's that's only human nature, amen. When somebody does you wrong like that, you you know, you're thinking, you know, your first your first inclination is not Lord bless them. Lord, I want you to prosper them. <laughs> Lord, I want you to pour out your blessing on their life, God. That they want for nothing, oh Lord. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We we break out all kind of scriptures on them. You break out Psalm thirty five on them. Let the extortioner stand at their side, Lord. Let them burn and burn and burn, you know. That's, norm, that's the normal prayer of most Christians after you've been done like that, you know. And, you know, and, and of course, the, the world will say rightfully so. But uh, the Lord is challenging us to, to have a different view on things, you know, which, you know, we need to have because it's going to benefit us in the long run. Amen? Because when you harbor unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart, it rots on the inside of you. Amen. It doesn't do anything to the person that you're holding stuff against. It does something to you. Amen. You know, now judgment comes more quick, quickly to the unsaved, wicked individual, because that person is without God. But what happens when you are wronged by a fellow Christian? Hmm. Are they judged the same way the heathen are judged? You know, this is kind of taboo. You know, kind of a taboo subject because, you know, you know, people, people tend to stay away from, you know, this kind of issue right here because Christians aren't supposed to be doing wrong things, right? Especially to fellow believers, you know? Unfortunately, if you know like I know, some people specialize in getting Christians. Wolves in sheep clothing, the Bible calls them. But this is not about them and the wrong that they have done. This is not about them. So, you know, this is about you and how you conduct yourself after the fact. Yeah. 
But to answer your question, no. Christians are not judged the same way the heathen are judged. Why? Because the same Jesus that's making intercession for you before the Father is making intercession for them also. So, you know, you want, you know, hellfire to rain down on their head, but, you know, you know, they, they have a covenant too. Now, that does, does that mean that nothing's going to happen when something goes on? Well, that's not for you to worry about. Right. Amen? And, and it depends on the amount of light that they're walking in. Know this. It grieves the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, when judgment is passed on any individual, especially a Christian. What does this have to do with staying on course? When we should be going on with God, staying on the path of righteousness, we get sidetracked because the person that did us wrong has not been judged in a way that we can see or acknowledge or to our satisfaction. Lord, you didn't burn them all the way up. You left their little toe. We need them burnt all the way up. You know? You know how we do. Mm-hmm. Praise God forever. Philippians 3, 13 through 14, out of the God's Word translation. Brothers and sisters, I can't consider myself a winner yet. This is what I do. I do not look back. I lengthen my stride. And I run straight toward the goal to win the prize that God's heavenly call offers in Christ Jesus. Now let's look at that in the, in the King James. 3.13 through 14. This may be a more familiar rendering for you. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the, high, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we need to put that stuff behind us. We need to cast the care of that on the Lord. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, it was wrong. Yeah, it was bad. But you don't need to carry that around with you. You need to cast the care of that onto the Lord. Amen? which is sometimes easier said than done, yeah. you know, because I've been saved for a little while now, and, uh, you know, I haven't been saved as long as some. I didn't get saved with Abraham, <laughs> but, you know, in my, in, my, in my short time as a Christian, I've, I've seen some folks do some things that, you know, you just, and you're thinking, and you was just telling me how you much you love the Lord, and, you know, God is good, and you know how people are, praise the Lord, saints, God is good all the time. You know, and you did that? Okay, I got you. I got you. But don't let the seed of bitterness land in the soil of your human spirit, of your spirit man. Always stay in an attitude of forgiveness. It keeps the weeds from growing in the garden of your human spirit. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run the race, run with patience the race that is set before us. Everything that you may be feeling after the fact may not lead to sin, but it's certainly a weight. It's certainly going to keep you from doing all that the Lord will have for you to do because you're weighted down with it. Oh, I can't believe they did that. Oh, and you just, you're just feeling bad about the fact that they did what they did. You need to go ahead and cast that onto the Lord. Cast that care of that onto the Lord. He's got big hands and shoulders and he can hold it. Let him hold it. You stop picking it up. And don't give it to the Lord and then, then run back next week and pick it up. Well, Lord, I appreciate you holding it for me. I got it. I'm going to hold it for a while now. No, when you give it to him, give it to him. Amen? 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is what I believe is one of the causes of sickness to the saints in the body of Christ. You just can't let it go. I'll forgive them, but I'll never forget what they did. Hmm. Some things that we're holding on to are not necessarily sin, but they are surely slowing you down. In the life of a Christian, when sickness shows up, I believe it's because they've gotten off their love walk. Life-threatening illnesses don't just pop up. They've been growing silently for years in many cases. You haven't truly forgiven someone if what they did to you is still a part of your thought life. Yeah, that's right. Because the Bible says forgetting those things which are behind. So the Lord would say to forget about it if you couldn't do it. You can do it. Say, I can do it. I can forget about it. I cast that care on the Lord. Amen. And so this is, this is, this is we're, we're, we're keeping ourselves on course. We're staying in God's plan. We're staying in the will of God. Amen? Amen. You can't see a person's thought life, but God sees it all. And he's looking at it right now. Being hurt by someone in the, in the family, in the Christian family, carries more weight than being hurt by someone on the outside. Because the thought is, they should have known better. Or they were supposed to be a Christian. Why is this important? Letting go of prior hurts and wrongs done to you. Well, Galatians 5 and 6 says that faith works by love. Let's turn there. Galatians 5 and 6. When you have it, say amen. Like I said, we're not going to get real deep, but we're just going to put some things out there for you that may challenge you, and, you know. And if, you, if you're not dealing with what we're talking about, don't just, don't just throw it in the trash can. Put it on the shelf. You may need it real soon. Yeah. Amen. Galatians 5 and 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith worketh. By what? Love. By what? Love. Amen. Love forgives. Love holds no account of a suffered wrong. Hmm. So that's why we're talking about this. Yeah. You know, when, when something happens, you know, whether, you know, it was somebody that you know or somebody that you don't know, you need to cast the care of that on you, onto the Lord. Be free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Yeah. You've been set free, amen? Yeah. You've, been, you've been freed. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to be in bondage to, that, to the thought of that thing, to what happened, that situation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good, you're right. But let's, let's go ahead and cast that onto the Lord. Let's, let's run the race with patience, amen? Yeah. Bitterness and unforgiveness keeps you out of the realm of faith. It creates a disconnect, a short circuit. We want to stay connected. Amen? Amen. One sure way to get the, and, and see when these thoughts come back, because they will come back because the devil is the devil. Right, right. And he works in the past. You know, the devil's going to bring past hurts and past things back up. You know, oh, remember so-and-so? And you was just, you was praising God. You was, oh, magnify the Lord. And then that thought, mm, that heifer. <laughs> mm, I can't believe she did that. And your whole spiritual high is gone, toasted. Because of what that person did or the thought that came. But what do you need to do when the devil brings that stuff back up? 
Well, one way to get the devil to stop bringing up old hurts and wounds is to pray for that individual. Yeah. And we're not talking about, Lord, burn them up with a fervent heat. You know, we're not talking about that kind of pray for them. Pray to bless them. Yeah. Pray to, you know, that God would enlarge their coast and, you know, make them a blessing. Get them saved, Lord, if they're not saved. You know, and every time you do that, you put the devil on notice. I am not falling into that mess you're trying to give me. I'm not going to do it. Then you just, every time it comes up, you just, you just praying for them. You're just praying for them. And pray longer for them. You know, instead of praying, you know, 30 seconds, Lord, I just thank you that you're going to do good for them. And, uh, you know, you know, just, and it comes back up, you pray a minute. It comes back up again, you pray five minutes for them. And I, and I will, I will guarantee you this, the devil will stop bringing that stuff back to you. Yeah. He will stop bringing that thought back up to you. Because he's not going to have you blessing somebody. Because see, because see, now you're growing in your Christ-like walk. Amen. You're growing as a believer. You're walking, you're walking into Christ-like perfection. And he does not want the saints of God walking into Christ-like perfection. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. You, and this is a word that God spoke to me, and it's been very near and dear to my heart. And I'm going to give it to each one of you. And, and the hope, hopefully it will, it, will, it will resonate in your spirit like it did in mine. You know, because quite honestly, you know, this, this is one of the hardest seasons in my life right now that I'm in right now. Right now, things are going on and, excuse me, things are going on and, you know, if I, if I wanted to have a pity party, I mean, the devil would bring the hats and the, and, and the whistles and everything and, and, and just party down pity party style. I mean, if I wanted to have a pity party, I could, but I, I, I say I refuse. Yeah. I have been made more than a conqueror. Yeah. Amen. amen. I got the victory, glory to God. And you have the victory, amen? amen? Glory to God. Don't let the devil steal it from you. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Every time he, he brings something up, you just say, praise God, I got the victory. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. And sometimes when you start off, it's a little dry. You know, when you start praising God, you know, and you're going through a rough time and the devil just gave you one of those thoughts that, you know, it's party time, pity party style. And you just refuse. You say, Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to praise you for your goodness. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And you just start rehearsing that. I praise you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. And it, start, it starts off a little dry and slow at first. And, you know, it feels like you're just, tr just dragging your feet through the sand. And you're just trying to get there. But it's, if you know anything about cars, you know, a lot of times, you know, now most cars don't come this way. Uh, most cars come with power, power steering now. But, you know, back in the uh, 80s and 70s, you know, you have cars that didn't have power steering. And, boy, if you've ever tried to drive a car without power steering, especially if it weighed over a few thousand pounds, man, that was some type of rough going if the car wasn't moving. Yeah. I mean, you sitting there, you want to do a three-point turn. And I used to have an old 73 Pontiac Catalina. I used to call it the love boat. <laughs> it was white. That thing was long as it could be. I think that thing was like 24 feet long. It was it was over it was 20 feet or more long. It was it was long. And I and I and I made I was in high school and I made a a a, a tag for it. And of course I was taking French. And so I put La Batu de Mor, which stood for the love boat. <laughs> and uh, man. That car, it would drive like a dream, man, when that power steering was working, boy. But one time that power steering went out, boy, man, it take, it, it, whoo. And you like this, you like, you just about to stand up on the wheel to turn it. You're like, hmm, 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 hmm. And I'm just talking about, you know, just parking. Yeah. You know, but anyway, 
I said all that to say this. When you're praising God, when you're praising and it just and it feels kind of dry, you just feel like you're kind of going through the motion, it's like, it's like power steering. You know, you may start off by yourself, but somewhere in there, Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you've been good to me. Lord, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Lord, I want to thank you for waking me up today. Lord, I want to thank you for, for blessing me all through today, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you caused me to, to dwell in safety. You caused me to come and go, and, and my day is blessed. Everything I set my hand to prospers. Father, I want to thank you. And as you do that, as you, as you press your way in, as you press your way in, it seems kind of dry. It seems kind of, you know, like you're going through the motion. And it seems lethargic and, you know, and you just going through. But somewhere in there, like power steering, God kicking in on you. Woo! And before you know it, you done stepped into some glory. Woo! Glory to God. Man, you're like, woo. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, and people in the other room are like, what's going on in there? <laughs> Man, you done tapped into some glory. Hallelujah. Man, spend time thanking God, yeah. praising God for his goodness, mm -hmm. keeping you, showing his love towards you. Amen. Because the Lord has been good to each and every one of you. I know he's been, I can't, I, I know he's been good to me. Mm -hmm, man. You know, and, and if you take a survey of your own life, you know he's been good to you yeah, too. Man, Woo! Glory to God. But the word that the Lord gave to me was this. And this was right on the heels of things going south. I mean, just days prior to things, just the world just being upside down, you know. He said this to me. He said, and I, and I, was, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was, you know, talking about a hard spot that he was in and this, that, and the other. And I thought the word was for him. And I'm thinking I'm, you know, encouraging my brother. But little did I know, I, I, I need to claim this word for me. This is I need I need this word now. So, whenever you're talking to someone and encouraging someone, you know, don't just be frivolous of how you, you know, when you encourage someone. Sometimes the Lord is maybe speaking to them, but He may be speaking something to you too. Amen. And I was I was I was encouraging him and. And the Lord spoke this to me. He said, you do what the Lord would have for you to do and stay the course. Amen. I'll say that again. You do what the Lord would have for you to do and stay the course. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this time. We thank you for the opportunity to, to preach to the people, to, to minister your word, Father. We thank you, Father, that, that your word is a, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, we thank you that the entrance, thank you, Lord, the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding even unto the simple. We thank you, Lord, that your word has entered into our, our ears and, and our hearts and, and is processing in our minds. Father, we thank you right now that, the, that this word will not fall on deaf ears. That this word that I believe was straight from the Spirit of God will begin to challenge and propel each person under the sound of my voice into the, into the destiny that you would have them to go. Father, we give your name all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. We're going to stay the course, Lord. We're going to stay on the path. We're going we're gonna to forgive people, Lord. And Father, we're not going to take it for granted that things are just going to happen just because we're saints of God. That there are things that we must do. That we must put our hand to the wheel. And we must begin to turn. And as we begin to exercise 
you will kick in on us. Glory to God. You'll show up like you always do. And we thank you for it, Father. Now, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I, ne I never like to close a service without uh, giving someone an opportunity to receive Christ. As I look over the crowd here, it looks like everybody here is, you know, family. But, you know, there may be, be one that, that heard tonight's message and say, well, you know, Brother Jeff, I've as you were as you were ministering, there was some there were some areas areas there that I could that I believe the Lord wants to deal with me on some areas of bitterness, unforgiveness, some things that would keep me from running the race with patience. I I I, I heard what you were saying, and and I, I believe that this is this this word was for me. If that's you, and you want us to pray for you concerning this. So, because we want you to, we want you to be back in right fellowship with the Lord. We want you to be able to run the race with patience. We want that weight off of you, so you can go on and be and do all that God will have for you to be and do. And if that's you, with head, every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, just if you want to, just raise your hand up. We'll be glad to pray for you, pray with you. Glory to God. Amen. Will there be one? Praise God. Father, we just want to thank you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, open your eyes and look back up at me here. Well, we want to thank you for your being here tonight. I know I'm not. I know I'm not as good as Pastor Ed. You know, because he's you know, Pastor Ed's a dynamite man. Boy, I'm trying to tell you. You know, that's that's why I call him Pastor. Yeah. Um, right. Amen. And he's a he's a he's a great blessing. Yes, he is. You know. And uh, we just we just we just expect them to get full of the word this this time this week while they're out there at camp meeting and just come back and blow on us with both barrels. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know we we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, you know begrudge the fact that you know Pastor goes out to special meetings and going out to Rama and and uh, you know getting getting filled back up and you know because they need that time. Amen. Well, they can they can get resharpened. Amen. Because it's going to, who's that going to benefit? Us. Yeah, right. That's right. Because when he comes back with some good stuff, good anointing, power of the Holy Ghost, and he, he unleashes it on us while we're sitting out there and we're like, yay! We reap the benefits of it. Amen. Amen.